The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me on this Wednesday, the 23rd of February. Uh, today we continue in the book of Exodus. Uh, we'll have chapters 29 through 32. It'll be broken down into eight sections, so I'm not going to give you all eight of those sections, but we'll be stopping uh, eight different times as we go through chapters 29 through 32 of Exodus. And we continue using the Pray for Us calendar and, of course, the prayer of the church on the back of your weekly insert. Let us begin in prayer. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear the word of the Lord from the book of Exodus, the 29th chapter, entitled, Consecration of the Priests. Now this is what you shall do to them to consecrate them, that they may serve me as priests. Take one bull of the herd and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers smeared with oil. You shall make of them a fine wheat flour. You shall put them in one basket and bring them in the basket and bring the bull and the two rams. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of the meeting and wash them with water. Then you shall take the garments and put on Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastpiece and gird him with skillfully woven band of the ephod. And you shall set the turban on his head and put the holy crown on the turban. You shall take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint him. Then you shall bring his sons and put coats on them. And you shall gird Aaron and his sons with sashes and bind caps on them. And the priesthood shall be theirs by a statute forever. Thus you shall ordain Aaron and his sons. Then you shall bring the bull before the tent of meeting. Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the bull. Then you shall kill the bull before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and shall take part of the blood of the bull and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger, and the rest of the blood you shall pour out at the base of the altar. And you shall take all the fat that covers the entrails, and the long lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, and burn them on the altar. But the flesh of the bull, and its skin, and its dung, you shall burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. Then you shall take one of the rams, and Aaron and his son shall lay their hands on the head of the ram, and you shall kill the ram, and shall take its blood, and throw it against the sides of the altar. Then you shall cut the ram into pieces, and wash its entrails and its legs, and put them with its pieces and its head, and burn the whole ram on the altar. And it is a burnt offering to the Lord. It is a pleasing aroma, a food offering to the Lord. You shall take the other ram, and Aaron and his son shall lay their hands on the head of the ram, and you shall kill the ram, and take part of its blood, and put it on the tip of the right ear of Aaron, and on the tips of the right ears of his sons, and on the thumbs of their right hands, and on the great toes of their right feet, and throw the rest of the blood against the sides of the altar. Then you shall take part of the blood that is on the altar, and of the anointing oil, and sprinkle it on Aaron and his garments, and on his sons and his sons' garments with him. He and his garments shall be holy, and his sons and his sons' garments with him. You shall also take the fat from the ram, and the fat tail, and the fat that covers the entrails, and the long lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, and the right thigh, for it is a ram of ordination. And one loaf of bread, and one cake of bread made with oil, and one wafer out of the basket of unleavened bread that is before the Lord. You shall put all these on the palms of Aaron, and on the palms of his sons, and wave them with a wave offering before the Lord. Then you shall take them from their hands, and burn them on the altar on top of the burnt offering, as a pleasing aroma before the Lord. It is a food offering to the Lord. You shall take the breast of the ram of Aaron's ordination and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord, and it shall be your portion. And you shall consecrate the breast of the wave offering that is waved and the thigh of the priest's portion that is contributed from the ram of ordination from what was Aaron's and his son's. It shall be for Aaron and his sons as a perpetual due from the people of Israel, for it is a contribution. It shall be a contribution from the people of Israel for their peace offerings, their contribution to the Lord. 
the holy garments of Aaron shall be for his sons after him. They shall be anointed in them and ordained in them. The son who succeeds him as priest who comes into the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place shall wear them seven days. You shall take the ram of ordination and boil its flesh in a holy place. And Aaron and his son shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket in the entrance of the tent of meeting. They shall eat those things with which atonement was made at their ordination and consecration, but an outsider shall not eat of them, because they are holy. And if any of the flesh for the ordination or of the bread remain until the morning, then you shall burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten, because it is holy. Thus you shall do to Aaron and to his sons, according to all that I have commanded you. Through seven days shall you ordain them, and every day you shall offer a bull as a sin offering for atonement. Also you shall purify the altar when you make atonement for it, and it shall anoint it to consecrate it. Seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and consecrate it, and the altar shall be most holy. Whatever touches the altar shall become holy. Now this is what you shall offer on the altar. Two lambs a year old, day by day, regularly. One lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at twilight. And with the first lamb, a tenth sea of fine flour, mingled with a fourth of a hin of beaten oil, and a fourth of a hin wine for a drink offering. The other lamb you shall offer at twilight, and shall offer with it a grain offering, and its drink offering, as in the morning, for a pleasing aroma of food offering to the Lord. It shall be a regular burnt offering throughout your generations at the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord, where I will meet with you to speak to you there. There I will meet with you with the people of Israel. It shall be sanctified by my glory. I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar. Aaron also and his sons I will consecrate to serve me as priest. I will, I will dwell among the people of Israel, and I will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. So far the word of the Lord. In this 29th chapter of Exodus, God consecrates the priesthood of Aaron to consecrate his people, who then would become a kingdom of priests. Our high priest, Jesus, set aside this old order of sacrifices. He set aside this old order of sacrifices to offer himself once for all. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. Let us pray. Rejoice that through Jesus we can draw near to God with a true heart and full assurance of faith and receive forgiveness of all of our sins. In his name we pray. Amen. We continue in Exodus chapter 30, verses 1 through 10, verses 1 through 10, entitled, The Altar of Incense. You shall make an altar on which to burn incense. You shall make it of acacia wood. A cubit shall be its length, and a cubit its breadth. It shall be square, and two cubits shall be its height. Its horns shall be of one piece with it. You shall overlay it with pure gold its top and around its side and its horns, and you shall make a molding of gold around it, and you shall make two golden rings for it. Under its molding on two opposite sides of it, you shall make them, and they shall be holders for poles with which to carry it. You shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, and you shall put it in front of the veil that is above the ark of the testimony, in front of the mercy seat that is above the testimony, where I will meet with you. And Aaron shall shall burn fragrant incense on it every morning. When he dresses the lamps, he shall burn it. And when Aaron sets up the lamps at twilight, he shall burn it, a regular incense offering before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall not offer unauthorized incense on it, or a burnt offering, or a grain offering, and you shall not pour a drink offering on it. Aaron shall make atonement on its horns once a year. With the blood of the sin offering of atonement, he shall make atonement for it once in the year throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. So far the word of the Lord. These first ten verses of chapter 30, the Lord describes the use 
of incense in the sanctuary. It is offered with the people's prayers. Without faith, faith, it is impossible for us to pray rightly and to please God. Take a look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Jesus' life and work was pleasing incense before his Father. Through Jesus' through Jesus's intercession, our prayers are always acceptable. Let us pray. May the good news impel us to intercede continually before you. We pray this, Jesus, on the behalf of the church and on behalf of the needs of all people. In your name we pray. Amen. Exodus 30, verses 11 through 16, 11 through 16, entitled The Census Tax. The Lord said to Moses, when you take the census of the people of Israel, then each shall give a ransom for his life to the Lord when you number them. That there be no plague among them when you number them. Each one is numbered in the census shall give this, half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The shekel is 20 geras. Half a shekel is an offering to the Lord. Everyone who is numbered in the census from the 20 years old and upward shall give the Lord's offering. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel. When you give the Lord's offering to make atonement for your lives, you shall take the atonement money from the people of Israel and shall give it for the service of the tent of meeting, that it may bring the people of Israel to remembrance before the Lord, so as to make atonement for your lives. So far the word of the Lord. The census tax is established for upkeep and atonement at the sanctuary. Now no amount of labor on our part can remove the guilt that our sins incur. Only Jesus, only Jesus who paid the ransom for every soul that walks on earth. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus, may your Holy Spirit lead us to give generously so the work of proclaiming the gospel may go forth in word and sacrament. For you have paid the price for all. In your name we pray. Amen. Exodus chapter 30, verses 17 through 21, entitled The Bronze Basin. The Lord said to Moses, You shall also make a basin of bronze, with its stand of bronze for washing. You shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it, with which Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet. When they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister to burn a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash with water so that they may not die. They shall wash their hands and their feet so that they may not die. It shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his offspring throughout all generations. So far the word of the Lord. In these few verses we see that the priests must wash their hands and their feet before ministering before God. Our high priest Jesus was washed Look at Matthew 3, verses 13 through thir uh, 17. He was washed before he began his work of redemption on our behalf. We pray. O Lord Jesus, through our pastor's service and holy baptism, you wash our hands and our feet and our conscience. May this washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit move us to serve you by serving our neighbor. In your name we pray. Amen. Exodus chapter 30, verses 22 through 28, entitled, The Anointing Oil and Incense. The Lord said to Moses, Take the finest spices of liquid myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet-smelling cinnamon, half as much, that is 250, and 250 of aromatic cane, and 500 of cassia, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and a hin of olive oil. And you shall make of these a sacred anointing oil blended as by the perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it you shall anoint the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the table and all its utensils and the lampstand and its utensils and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offerings with all its utensils and the basin and its stand. You shall consecrate them that they may be most holy. 
Whatever touches them will become holy. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may serve me as priests. And you shall say to the people of Israel, This shall be my holy anointing oil throughout your generations. It shall not be poured on the body of an ordinary person. And you shall make no other like it in composition. It is holy and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it or whoever puts any of it on an outsider shall be cut off from the people. The Lord said to Moses, Take sweet spices, statiot and anashit, and gall benum, sweet spices with pure frankincense. Of each shall there be an equal part, and make an incense blended as per the perfumer, seasoned with salt, pure and holy. You shall beat some of it very small, and put a part of it before the testimony in the tent of meeting where I shall meet with you. It shall be most holy for you, and the incense that you shall make according to its composition you shall not make for yourselves. It shall be for you holy to the Lord. Whoever makes any like it is to use as perfume shall be cut off from his people. So far the word of the Lord. The Lord here gives details for the anointing oil. This perfumed oil distinguishes the Lord's priest and the tabernacle. Today, the Lord sends the Holy Spirit, who sets us apart from the world by his work of sanctification and the fruit of the Spirit. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for anointing us in baptism that we may serve you in holiness and approach you in all boldness and confidence. As dear children, ask their dear Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 through 11, entitled, Oleb and Bezalel. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood, to work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed with him Oholeb, the son of Ashamach, of the tribe of Dan. And I have given to all able men ability that they may all that I have commanded you. The tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is on it and all the furnishings of the tent, the table and its utensils and the pure lampstand with all its utensils and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils and the basin and its stand and the finely worked garments, the holy garments for Aaron, the priest and the garments of his sons for their service as priest, and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded you, they shall do. So far the word of the Lord. Artisans assemble to begin the work, and they follow the Lord's plans, and they follow the Lord's plans exactly. As you serve in your congregation, remember that Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Psalm 127, 1. Value the service of each person, but give all glory to the Lord who forgives your sins and makes you one in Christ. Let us pray. O oh Jesus, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what is our duty. Lead us to use our gifts in honorable service to spread your gospel. In your name we pray. Amen. Exodus 31, verses 12 through 18, entitled, The Sabbath. And the Lord said to Moses, You are to speak to the people of Israel and say, Above all, you shall keep my Sabbaths. For this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does any work on it, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. 
Therefore the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave to Moses, when he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. So far the word of the Lord. Plans for construction are revealed. Craftsmen are imbued with the spirit of God and they are secured. Such work is not an end in itself, for it finds its fulfillment in the Sabbath rest for the sin-wearied soul. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, may your spirit work in our hearts, leading us to repentance, that we may remain in the rest that you have for us through all eternity. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And lastly, for this Wednesday, the 23rd of February, Exodus chapter 32, entitled The Golden Calf. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down for your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf, and have worshipped it, and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, in order that I may make a great nation of you. But Moses implored the Lord his God, and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent did he bring them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your offspring as the stars of the heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your offspring, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord relented from the disaster that he had spoken of bringing on his people. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tables of the testimony in his hand, the tablets that were written on both sides, on the front and on the back they were written. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. But he said, It is not the sound of shouting for victory, or the sound of the cry of the defeat, but the sound of singing that I hear. And as soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger burned hot. And he threw the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they had made and burned it with fire and ground it to powder and scattered it on the water and made the people of Israel drink it. And Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought such a great sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord burn hot. You know the people that they are set on evil, for they said to me, Make us gods who shall go before us. As for this, Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So I said to them, 
Let any who have gold take it off. So they gave it to me, and I threw it into a fire, and out came this calf. And when Moses saw that the people had broken loose, for Aaron had let them break loose to the derision of their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Come to me, and all the sons of Levi gathered around him. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Put your sword on your side, each of you, and go to and fro from gate to gate throughout the camp. And each of you kill his brother and his companion and his neighbor. And the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And that day about three thousand men of the people fell. And Moses said, Today you have been ordained for the service of the Lord, each one of, at the cost of his son and of his brother, so that he might bestow a blessing upon you this day. The next day Moses said to the people, You have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Alas, this people have sinned a great sin. They have made for themselves gods of gold. But now if you will forgive their sin. But if not, please blot me out of your book that you have written. But the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. But now go, lead the people to the place about which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord set a plague on the people, because they made the calf, the one that Aaron made. So far, the word of the Lord. In chapter 32, they are feeling alone, and they are in the wilderness. And Israel soon doubts God's promises, and very quickly, Israel turns to idolatry. Their idol is unable to help them. And they experience even greater suffering. We too grow impatient. And we too far too often doubt God's promises. In fear or doubt we may turn to idols of our own. Anything that we fear, love, and trust more than the true God is an idol. But these idols cannot help us. Thank God that he remembers his promises and that he is always faithful to us, even when we are unfaithful. He sends his son to offer atonement for all of our sin, and he alone is able to take the sin of the world upon himself and give to each one of us his righteousness. We are God's people because of Jesus and because of Jesus alone. We pray. O Christ, Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, thank you for giving yourself for me. Forgive my sins and strengthen me to believe in you and to love you. In your name I pray. Amen. We continue in prayer on this 23rd day of February. We remember Polycarp who was a pastor and a martyr. We thank God for those who continue the teachings of Jesus and in those early centuries gave their lives for the gospel and for all martyrs who gave their lives for the proclamation of the one true faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church on the back of your insert. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of God, for the renewal of our faith, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the world, for the strengthening of the holy churches of God, for the unity of the church in doctrine and in piety, and for this holy house, that those who enter here may do so in faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, the President, and all those in public office for this parish and city and for the faithful in them, for favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for all honorable vocations, businesses, and industries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer. 
those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will, and sustain them unto the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are bold to pray together as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.